Proverbs, the uh, tenth chapter and the fourth verse. Proverbs 10, 4 says, He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. If you just goof off and are slack, this scripture is just as true as Mark eleven twenty three, 23. Right. Isn't it? Right. You won't prosper. You'll become poor. Verse 5, He that gathers in summer is a wise son, but he that sleeps in harvest is a son that causes shame. Is it possible to sleep through a harvest? Is it possible to be lazy and goof off when you're supposed to be getting up, going out, doing something? The further we've gone in the things of God, uh, I know it was so uh, obvious just a few months ago, we were, uh, we were needing a big chunk to come in concerning some of the things down in Sarasota. And we're believing God, but I've learned that God answers you in the form of direction. And then when you do what he tells you to do, that connects you with the provision. And there was a particular thing. I wasn't planning on going to this place and being involved in any way, but the Lord dealt with me. And so I got my little stuff together and I took off and I went. And before the week was over, I was at the right place and the right time. And a seed came in that we could use for that project, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, what if you hadn't gone? What if you hadn't done what he told you to do that week? See, the Lord said, cast the net on the right side of the ship. Yep. Then, do you understand what I'm talking about? That we have something to do with the harvest. Yes. You don't just give in the offering and make confessions and that's it. That's right. Right. That gets you started. Yes. Tithe and get you blessed yep. and get you protected. Yes. And if you'll stand and not quit, not give up, there'll come a time yes. when the Lord will prompt you. Go over here and do this. Go over here and do that. Works for everybody. The same. Doesn't matter if you're a preacher or a plumber. No difference. Works exactly the same. Go over here. Do this now. And if you're lazy and lay around, don't do it. This scripture says you'll become poor. And you could sleep right through a harvest. When the Lord says get up and go, you best get up and go. Or you could be missing a huge harvest. Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 4. He that observes the wind shall not sow. He that regards the clouds shall not reap. The, the BBE, the basic English Bible says, he who is watching the wind will not get the seed planted. Why didn't he plant seed? He was looking at the wrong thing and thinking, well, I can't sow right now because of this, because of that, because of the other. Well, if you don't, if you don't sow, are you going to have any harvest? No, you never got started. Can you miss a sowing opportunity by looking at the wrong things? Yep. People are doing it right and left, but not us. No. <laughs> if somebody said, "Well, I, I did it yesterday," that was yesterday. <laughs> We're forgetting those things that are behind, Amen. right? We're pressing forward. Right. He who's watching the wind will not get the seed planted, and he who is looking at the clouds will not get in the grain. Just like you could get to looking at something and miss an opportunity to sow. According to this, you could have sowed good seed, you could have made good confessions, you could, you could have stood and God brought a harvest and brought it right to you, but you're looking at the wrong thing and didn't get it in. That's right. wow. Didn't get your harvest in. Looking at the wrong thing will cause you to miss an opportunity for a harvest. So we've covered these things already in some detail. You ready to go on further? Yes. yes. All right, turn with me please to Galatians, Galatians 6. I'm excited about this series. We're already seeing fruit of people reaping that hadn't been reaping. 
That excites me. Hmm? Glory to God. <laughs> Get out of the way, devil. You know, he, he thought he had, well, he had some people fooled and thought that they're waiting on God. Hmm? And then year after year roll by and them not receive their harvest. But I believe scales are going to come off of eyes, right? And people are going to quit being passive and begin to rise up in their faith and learn how to hear from the Lord and learn how to be led and show up at the right place on the right day at the right time and boom, boom, boom. Come a dragging a big harvest in. And that's going to enable all kind of stuff. Paying off all the debts, sowing big whopper chunk seeds, huh? Fulfilling God's plan, and whatever it takes materially and financially to do. And we're not just talking about finances. The same things we're talking about, about reaping a harvest of money and finances, applies to reaping a harvest of people. We didn't just say how to harvest money. We said how to harvest, period. Every area. And the same thing is true. The Lord is showing us how to what the, our responsibility in getting the, the human harvest, the soul harvest. In uh, Galatians 6, are you there? Galatians 6 and 9. He said, let us not be weary in well-doing. In that passage, he's talking about sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, period. No. What's the next word? What does if mean? If means it's not all up to God. Doesn't it? If means you will reap if you don't do this. You won't reap if you do. That's right. We will reap, not necessarily the next day or the next week. Some things, not even the next year. But we will, we shall. How many know what shall means? Yeah. Shall mean it's not a matter as is it going to happen, <laughs> just when. Amen. <laughs> if. So this, just like we got through reading, you could get to looking at the wrong thing and miss a harvest. You could sleep and be lazy right through a harvest. According to this, uh, and this is connected with the two, you can faint and fail to reap. Let me read this to you from another translation, the New King James. The New King James says, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for, and the good specifically, if you read back up through the previous verses, he's talking about giving, doing good and giving. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now, the Lord would not tell us this in the Word unless there was a real danger and a real temptation to lose heart. And he, he's, he's informing us so that we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. He's letting us know this is not just going to happen automatically no matter what you got to do. You must not allow yourself to do this. To do what? To lose heart? To faint. Why? Because if you do, even though you sowed good seed and made good confessions for years, you're not going to reap. Right. This is something we must not do. Right. Amen. Right. Thank you. Faint and lose heart. Well, what would it look like if you fainted and lost heart? And what would it look like if you didn't? Hmm? <laughs> well, go to Psalm 126. We'll, with the Lord's help, we'll paint you a picture. Psalm 126 and 5. They that sow in tears 
shall reap in joy. Mm -hmm. Say it out loud. Shall reap in joy. Shall reap in joy. Shall reap. How many like shall reap? Shall reap. Not shall not reap, shall reap in joy. Shall reap in joy. That's a simple phrase, but I'm telling you, it's a huge part of this whole series we're in right now. Everything with God is by faith. Everything. You get born again by faith, you get forgiven by faith. Filled with the Spirit by faith. Healed by faith. You live by faith. You walk by faith. You overcome by faith. You receive by faith. Everything, everything. And faith is victorious. Faith is an overcomer. Faith is not a fainter. And faith is not depressed. No, my sister, no, my brother. Faith is joyous. God loves what kind of giver? Hmm? Now, that's the same thing as saying faith pleases him. Because it is a main indicator of faith. Can you tell it already? I mean, we hadn't... We hadn't got all the way into it. We're just getting our toes wet. And can you, did you get a little tingle when you put your toe in it? You're like, ooh, yeah, yeah. Something here. Yes. <laughs> that's not me. That's the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's, that's his, his living word. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shall reap in joy. Hallelujah. Say it out loud, shall reap. Shall reap. In joy. In joy. Who's going to reap in joy? Amen. Everybody yes. that reaps in joy, that reaps, reaps in joy. You, you're a reaper. Yes. Maybe you've been a good sower. You might have been a good tither for years, but you had not been that hot at reaping. <laughs> but that's a changing. Amen. That's a changing as we speak. You know, a lot of people have gone around for decades saying, well, I love to give, but it's hard for me to receive. That's one of the dumbest things you ever said. That's just shooting yourself in the foot, man. How are you going to give and you don't receive? If you really enjoy giving, then you want to receive a bunch so you can give more. That means you got to reap yes. full harvest yes. off of every good seed you've sown. Right. And I assure you, the plan of God for you is so big, it's going to take everything you've sown, the full harvest off of it to do it all. That's right. That's right. And if you're not bumping up against that, then you're just goofing off. And you're not pursuing the full plan of God. Because I assure you, the full plan of God, you cannot reach in your pocket and pay for it. <laughs> you and all your buddies can't pitch in together. It's way out beyond. You're going to have to believe God. You're going to have to sow seed. And you're going to have to reap 30, 60, 100 fold to get it done. Glory to God. And it's challenging, but it's exciting. And the rewards are in this world and out of this world. Go with me to, hold your place there and go to Romans chapter 15 and 13. Or the, you can just read it off the screen. Romans 15, 13. Joy is directly connected to hope. Now hope means a different thing in the Bible, in the Greek, in the Hebrew, than a lot of our modern English usage. When people say, I sure hope so, 
they are not talking about what the Bible's talking about. They mean some kind of a wish, some kind of a want. I wish it would be, I want it to be. That has to do with desire. And there's a completely different, different words for desire. Hope means confident expectation. And that's what faith is the substance of. Not the substance of wishful thinking. Faith is the substance of things confidently expected. Glory to God. And faith is how you reap. But it'll be evidenced in the presence of hope and the presence of joy. In, in uh, Romans 15, 13, the God of hope, Mr. I thought he was the God of faith. If you're the God of one, you are the God of the other. They go together. The God of hope. What does hope mean? Tell me, tell me out loud. Confident. Don't just take my word for it. Look it up in your dictionaries and your lexicons. If you haven't already, you'll see it. Confident expectation fill you with joy. See, that's why he said God of hope instead of something else because the hope is what's causing the joy. The God of confident expectation fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in confident expectation through the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this is not a picture of fainting. That's right. Being down, being depressed, giving up, losing heart. Is it? Did you remember Nehemiah, what is it, Nehemiah 8.10 or so, that said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Say that out loud. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you want to be strong? Do you want to stay strong? No matter what's going on, strong, it will be evidenced by joy. No, these two indicators are so significant. The God of hope fill you with all what? Joy. And what? Peace. Peace. These, I, I, for decades now, I I joy and peace in my life like I do the gauges on the airplane. There's a couple of gauges I really watch on the airplane. One of them is that the engines are making good power because that keeps you flying. The other one is fuel in the tanks because that's how the engines keep making good power. You don't just, uh, the, the airplane we got now has got two little white bars that go up to how much and when it's gone there's no white bars there anymore. You want plenty of white bars. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and if the, if the white bars are getting low, fuel is getting low, or the power is getting low, that's not good because you can't stay up. And in my life, I look out for that joy gauge. And I look for that peace gauge. And if my joy is getting low, I begin to say, hey, hey, hey. That can't go on. Because right. if I run out of joy, it means I'm out of faith. Yeah, that's right. If I'm out of faith, I'm out of victory. God, I can't please God with anything I do. I can't overcome. I can't receive. And that other gauge is peace. When you lose your peace and you lose your joy, you've lost your faith. And you've lost your victory. And you will not be okay. People can try to pretend, oh, well, it'll be okay. Not unless you get back in faith, it won't. Uh -huh, that's right. Right. 
Everything's not just going to be okay unless we get in faith and stay in faith. Oh, but when you're full of joy, whoop, right up the top. Full of peace, whoop, right up the top. Oh, brother, you can push the throttles all the way up. Let her rip. Let's go somewhere. Huh? Let's get high and fast. Leave the junk behind. Go to a better place. I mean, that's what your faith does. Your faith will get you out of the junk. The faith will get you out of the mud and get you, out, get you up higher. Come on now. Your faith will get you through the bad stuff and get you into the place God has for you, into your harvests, into your healing, into your freedom. It takes faith to get there. And faith is evident by joy and peace. Joy and peace. Let me encourage you in your own life, watch your joy level. Watch your peace level. It is never okay for you to go half a day down. It's not okay. There's no excuses. I don't care what happened in your life. It's not okay to yield to depression and get down. You go for hours and you hadn't smiled. You hadn't laughed in days. You're acting like a heathen. Like an unsaved person. <laughs> See, people associate that with some kind of sin only that they got in their mind. But no, you and I are supposed to have the spirit of victory in us and on us and through us. Right? And it's evidenced by joy and by peace. When you come into the room, joy ought to come in with you. And peace ought to come in with you. That is faith and that is overcoming. Well, that's how we reap. It's directly mentioned in the scriptures with reaping. Go back to your... Uh, your psalm there, Psalm 126 and 5. Let's look at it again. They that sow in tears don't reap in tears. You got to get out of the tear phase. Hmm? If you want to reap. You got to quit crying. Quit being down. Quit feeling bad. If you're going to get into reaping, you got to get into joy. Amen. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Verse 6, they that go forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again, what? Rejoicing. Come with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Joy. Rejoicing. Thank you, Lord. Don't turn there, but put up 1 Peter 1 and 8, please. 1 Peter 1 and 8. Whom having not seen, talking about the Lord, you love, and in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, when you're believing, what do you do? Rejoice. You rejoice with joy unspeakable. Now that's major joy. You, you, you lose words. You just bubble and, and can't say it all. And <laughs> this is the condition of being very strong in the Lord. Because the joy is your strength. More of it you got, the stronger you are. Stronger you are in faith, in God, in spirit, the harder it is for anything to shake you and move you. But see, when you don't have much joy or much peace, any little old thing knock you down. Because you, you were barely getting by to start with. You did smile once <laughs> yesterday. And then you had a flat. And oh, man. <laughs> what little joy you had is gone. 
You're just down and, and no peace. You're upset. You're frustrated. You're anxious. That's like unsaved people are. Oh, but friend, when you are full of joy and full of peace, some pretty tough stuff can slap you. And all it did was knock you down to 80%. And you can get that built back up pretty quick. <laughs> you just look at it and you go, well, God's got me through worse than this. And, and I, I'm not going to lose my joy just because of this. Well, they said this about you and they did that and they wouldn't do that and they didn't agree. And If it doesn't take much, oh, well, let me say it like this. Whatever it takes to get you upset and down, shows your spiritual development. If it doesn't take much to get to you, then you're a little baby. Little whiny baby. You might be 60 years old on the outside, but inside spiritually, you're a little whiny baby. But you could also be 16 on the outside and be strong in the Lord and full of joy and full of peace and no matter what people say and do, you're like a rock. You just keep smiling. You just keep praising God. It doesn't shake you. It doesn't rattle you. These are the kind of people who get miracles. They overcome. Glory to God. Say it again. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Do you think it's worth your while to monitor your joy level and monitor, not to about somebody else's, yours. You monitor, don't monitor your spouse's joy level. Well, I think your joy needs to come up a little bit. Well, how about you look in the mirror? Don't do that. Monitor your joy level. Your, your peace level. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, We're making progress. <laughs> Go with me to uh, Joel chapter 1. Joel 1 and 12, notice this. The vine is dried up. The fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, apple tree, fields, all the trees of the field are what? Withered. Withered. I want you to read the next phrase out loud to me. Because. Why are they all withered? Because. Joy is withered away from the sons of men. Now, what do you get from a pomegranate tree? A harvest of pomegranates. <laughs> and from a palm tree, what do you get from an apple tree? Oh, apples, yeah, but a harvest of apples. Right? A harvest. And he said, if it's all withered up, are you getting a harvest? Oh, no. no, you're not. There's nothing to pick. It's all dried up. It's all withered up. Why? Are we reading the Bible? Yes, we are. They are withered. What's the very next word? Because. Why are they withered? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Now, this, friend, this is, uh, look at your neighbor, make sure they're awake. This, this is life-changing <laughs> revelation happening right now. This reminds you of the uh, modern proverb of what came, which came first, the chicken or the egg. You could say, well, they are depressed because the trees are not bearing. 
Is that so? Well, I'm down, Brother Keith, because it's bad. I'm sad. Is it, are you sad because it's bad? Or is it continuing to be bad because you're continuing to be sad? Oh, do you see this? According to the scripture, it didn't say uh, the other way around. It said the trees were withered because the joy was withered. Oh, you can see why the devil tries so hard to get us down. Why? Because it is tied to the faith that changes the situation. And if you walk by sight and things have got to improve before you feel better, then you're not doing the thing to cause it to change. And if the bad is changing you and how you feel, then you're not changing it. First Samuel, uh, the first chapter, look at that. First Samuel 1, we've read this before if you were with us. It's the story of Hannah and how she so wanted to have a child and could not conceive. And year after year, she was depressed. Have you read this? Yes, sir. Uh, her husband, verse 7, chapter 1, verse 7 says, Year by year she went up to the house of the Lord and she wept and wouldn't eat. Say it out loud. She cried, she cried and wouldn't eat. And so Elkanah, her husband, said, Hannah, why are you crying? You just cry all the time, baby. Why are you, why are you crying? And why won't you eat? You want to eat with me? Why is your heart so grieved? Am I not better than ten sons? <laughs> and she went, ah, and cried some more. She cried off and on for years. That is absolutely unchristian. Come on. Unchristian. Ungodly. Acting like there's no God. That's right. Acting like there's no help. Acting like there's no more miracles. Acting like he doesn't hear prayer. But one day, the reason why she's in here, she was at church again, crying at the altar (laughs) in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept sore. No telling how much praying she had done, but depressed, crying, praying will not get you a miracle. Some folks didn't like that. Well, just look back over the hit, your past. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. If crying and being depressed moved God for miracles, oh. they'd be popping all over the planet, right? <laughs> right now. <laughs> crying and being depressed will keep you away from miracles, will keep you out of your dream will ruin your life. It's a yielding to the devil. Because he's the one bringing you these thoughts and feelings of hopelessness. Huh? Now have I digressed? Or are we talking about you will faint what? If, excuse me, you'll reap. If what? If you don't faint. Will you be tempted to faint? Yeah, you will. It's something you got to resist, isn't it? And specifically, 
If you've sown and sown and sown or tithe and you haven't seen a full harvest off of it, the enemy will try to bring these thoughts. You're never going to see anything out of that. Come on. <laughs> You're just kidding yourself. You're going to lose everything you got. Yeah, you ain't going to be in the best shape of your life. You're going to be in the worst shape of your life. And if you believe that, you'll slump down and you will have zero joy, joy and you'll get to worrying about what's going to happen and you'll lose your peace. And you're in trouble. I said, you're in trouble. Because no matter how great God is and how easy it would be for him to fix it, he can't do it with you in that condition because he set things up to work by faith and you can't tell him, well, no, I want you to help me and me to be depressed. That's right. I want you to meet me, meet my depression. <laughs> he meets your faith. That's right. Not your depression. But notice what happened. Notice where the breakthrough came. She was praying. Eli saw her. And he said, uh, what are you doing here in church drunk? Verse 14. It's a Keith Moore paraphrase. You need to put that bottle away, girl. And she said, verse 15, I, no, I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm of a sorrowful spirit. And, and I hadn't drunk anything, but I'm just pouring out my soul before the Lord. But when you do it in depression and unbelief, you can do it for years and get no answers to your prayers. And Eli said, go in peace, and the Lord Israel, God of Israel, grant you your petition that you've asked him. And she took that as an answer from God. Yes, she, did. she took that as the, as the Lord talking to her through the man of God that it was granted. Now, she's not pregnant. She's got no proof that she can have children at this moment, but she's got a word. Yes, Amen. Right. Come on, can you see this? Yes. And she said, let your handmaid find grace in your sight. So are you looking at verse 18? Are you looking at verse 18? So the woman went her way and she did eat and her countenance was what? No, no more sad. And I mean, you. the very next verse, uh, they, they got up early the next morning and they went back home and, and her husband said he knew her and the Lord remembered her. And verse 20, it came to pass when the time came, Hannah conceived and bare a son and called his name Samuel. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord. When she stopped being sad, it stopped being bad. If you wait till it quits being bad to quit being sad, it's not going to change. That's walking my side. How do we reap? We reap in joy. Faith is the substance, the foundation it rests on, it's the confidence of things confidently expected. And faith will get joyous about my big harvest that I'm reaping when it looks like it just got 30% worse this morning. Huh? When bad news came and more bills came, faith will say, none of these things move me. I'm reaping. The Bible said I shall reap if I don't lose heart. And I'm not losing heart. This cannot shake the joy out of me. This cannot knock my peace out. I'm reaping. I'm reaping. I don't care who says what, who does what, what the stock market does, what the government does, what the economy does. It doesn't matter because God will not change. He's still on the throne. And I'm reaping. I'm reaping big. I'm reaping. <laughs> Tell me how will you reap? How will you reap? You will reap in joy. It takes strength. I said it takes strength to step out. It takes strength to put in the sickle. It takes strength to lay hold and reap it in. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. 
Just lift up your hands and praise him for a moment. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You are the joy of our salvation. You are our joy and light and life. And we give you praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How many Christians do you think are convinced I'm sad because it's bad? Hmm? So when are they going to get better? When are they going to come out of their depression? They would have to see it get better and feel it get better for them to improve how they feel. Which means they're operating just like unsaved people. They're walking totally by sight. And they're not going to get excited about anything unless and until they see the improvement, they experience the improvement. That's no faith at all. And there's no way to please God like that. But faith is the substance of things confidently expected. You've got no proof of it in the natural. You can't confirm it with a scientific test. But you are persuaded. So you're looking for it. And you're expecting it. And you've got joy about it when everybody else is crying. Well, look how bad it is. The Bible said Jesus himself endured the cross, suffering the shame. Do you know how he did it? For the joy. He went through the cross. How did he make it through that? How, how, could he, how did he not just despair and give up and give in? Because as awful as the physical part of being nailed to a cross is, that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was when all of our sins were laid on his spotless being and he bore the full brunt of all the punishment, all the judgment of every human being that had ever lived or ever would. We have no idea what that's like. The prophet seeing him in the book of Isaiah said his form was more misshapen than any man. That wasn't just his body. He's seeing in the spirit. That's what all our sin did to him. But he endured it victoriously. Why? What got him through that awful time? He was strong. There's no question about that. What was evidence of that great strength? That joy. He was holding on to that. That's what will get you through. That's what will get me through. No matter what's going on, don't look down at the moment. Look up on the other side. <laughs> Say, now, nah, I ain't staying here. I am not staying here with all these bills. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming over to paid for land. Abundant yes, yes, That's where I'm, I'm coming. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and shout about it right now. I'm going to go ahead and praise God about it. While I'm standing knee deep in bills right here, I am not, I'm not looking here. I'm not living here. And if you keep that in your, in your eyes and whatever the Lord told you he was doing for you, if you keep that word in you, that, that joy will keep you strong. And you'll maintain your peace. And you'll make it through that dark hour. That's you'll make it through that hard place. Yes, right. You'll overcome. Yes. And it will get better. Yes. I said it will get better. Yes. It may not all change and go away overnight, but it'll start going the other direction. Yes. And it'll start coming up. Yes. And there'll come a time when you'll look back on it and things have been so good for so long, it seems like a bad dream that happened to somebody else. Yes. Yes. And you'll give God all the glory yeah. and all the praise Hallelujah. for bringing you out of it yeah. into. Right. Thank you, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Luke, the first chapter, go there and let's, let's look at, at a bit more of a practical application of reaping. 
Let's see, I moved too quick. Go to, well, they'll put it up on the screen for us. Ecclesiastes 5, 19. Don't you appreciate them putting it up on the screen for us? Uh, I give them no warning at all. So they just have to be led and scramble and decipher. They do good, don't they? Um, Ecclesiastes 5, 19. It says, Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth. Who gave them to him? And has given him power to eat thereof. You know, there are people that make a lot of money and get some stuff, but are not able to enjoy it. But, but God gives you both. And to take his portion and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. Amen. Somebody say the gift of God. Gift of God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, verse 20. For he shall not much remember the days of his life because God answers him in the joy of of his heart. Why don't you notice that phrase? The joy of your heart for Christians, people who have the Spirit, is not just a personal emotional moment. God is in it. And answer from God is in it. Let me read other translations. <coughs> Young's literal translation, this is by the author of Young's Concordance. He ought to know something about the language. Verse 19, every man to whom God has given wealth and riches and has given him power to eat of it and to accept his portion and to rejoice in his labor, this is a gift of God. For he does not much Remember the days of his life, for God is answering through the joy of his heart. We all want an answer from God. Reaping is directly connected to an answer from God. You need to hear from God. We're going to talk more about this later. But you, you, how many think you ought to be led? You need to hear from him as to where to sow right. and when to sow yeah. and how much to sow right. and how to sow. Amen. It's possible to throw away good seed wow. by being led by the wrong thing. You can give to people that you shouldn't give to. You can give to ministries and projects that you shouldn't have given to. You need to be led. But it's also possible well, let me just say it this way. We, just like we need to be led in sowing, we need to hear from him about where to reap and when to reap and how to reap, just like throwing the net on the right side. How are we going to know that? This is tied to it. God answers you through the joy of your heart. This has to do with harvest detection. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about in here? Hmm? You have a harvest detector right on the inside. It's in your spirit by the Holy Spirit and it gets close to time for harvest and you get close to the place and way of harvest, it starts going beep, 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 beep. Joy. That's right. Amen. Joy. Phyllis and I have seen this in our own life numerous times. You, you're going along and everything seems kind of normal and you just start getting excited. And, and the excitement's real. And if you practice yield, just yielding to the Spirit without trying to understand it all, you'll just yield to it and you're happy and you're singing and, and then your head goes, what are we happy about? <laughs> I'll let you know later when I find out. But what, what's happening? God is answering you through the joy of your heart. You're getting close to something. 
and your spirit is detected. Your head, you don't see it or hear it yet. You don't know any details, but you are detecting harvest. Hallelujah. How most when you, when you start detecting harvest, it start to time to make sure that the tractor is ready to go, <laughs> huh? And the plow and the, the, the equipment's clean and, and greased up and, huh? Why? Why? Because we are getting close to a harvest here and we need to be, we need to be watching. We need to be paying attention because the Lord's going to show us, throw the net over on this side here this afternoon or today. Somebody say joy. Joy, 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 joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy. The New Living Translation of the 20th verse is interesting too. It brings out another side of this. It said, God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they take no time to brood over the past. <laughs> Why? Because they're just going from harvest to harvest to harvest and they're reaping the good things of God and they're doing the plan of God. They're making progress and it won't be long. They'll look back and their life is over. They're done. They're ready to get out of here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> While sadly, too many other brothers and sisters are down and sad and depressed and they're wishing things would change because they don't want to be sad. But how can you help it? If things are bad, you got to be sad. Can you see that's twisted? That is not true. If it's bad and you want it to quit being bad, tell me what do you do? Be no more, do like Hannah, be no more, stop the sadness, stop the depression, Without any reason out here to make you happy, you go ahead and believe what God told you. You go ahead and get happy and for the joy of what's coming, of what you see that he told you, you rejoice. And that strength will begin to pick you up and that faith will begin to change the things that are making it bad. You don't wait on things to change to get happy. You get happy and start changing the things. God does while you're happy. Yes. Thank you. Can you say glory to, God? glory to God? God answers you in the joy of your heart. I know uh, I heard uh, Phyllis and I worked with uh, Brother Kenneth Hagen Sr. and Miss Aretha for a number of years. And they would tell about how they moved from their little place in Texas to what became Rama Bible Training Center. And I don't know what is it. It's way over 100 acres out there, campus and all buildings and all kind of stuff. But they, they just felt like they were supposed to come to Tulsa. They didn't know anything beyond that. And after they got there, they looked at different places. And he said, he and she were in a car, and when they pulled onto the property that just had a couple of, a, uh, uh, an office area and a warehouse, nothing else was built, piece of land, they hadn't been there before. When they drove onto the property, both of them looked at each other, <laughs> and they said their spirit just leapt inside. What is that? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> huh? And, and what kind of effect does it have on you? When you sense that, do you go, oh, uh-uh. No, 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 no. That's not the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit witnesses with your spirit, it is a quickening. It's life. It's joy and peace. And sure enough, a lot, a lot of things had to happen. Miracles had to happen. But it was their place. And you know, they've been in the ministry for years and they had sown and sown obedience and sown money seed and other things. How many can see they're harvesting now? Yes. This place that becomes a Bible training center and a church and an and a international ministry. Yes. Did they reap? Yes. 
I don't think there's any, any stretch of, of thinking they, re they reaped 30, 60, 100 fold That's right. off of where they were. That's right. Same kind of thing happened with Phyllis and I when we came here. We just came here to goof off a couple of days. Amen. No intention to stay, no intention of moving, but we had a witness. And we came back and it got stronger. We came back, and, and Phyllis knew, knew a few things about real estate, and I said, well, I'm just going to stay in the room and pray, and, and she said, well, I'm going to look around, and then she calls, she says, you got to see this place. There's a yellow ribbon theater over there, because I said, well, you know, maybe we could, if we are supposed to come up here, we can find a, a, something for, for our office, and a place maybe a couple of hundred people could, could come, and we could shoot some TV stuff or whatever. She said, you got to come see this place. I said, what? what, what what's the size of it? Well, it's got 2,500 seats. I said, what? <laughs> what do we need with that? It's sitting on this. But then I saw it. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> joy. We could just joy. We were driving uh, from where we lived over here, and Phyllis just got to praising God and shouting over in the right seat. And there was nothing going on that I knew about. And, and, and I, said, I said, what? She said, I am so excited. I'm so excited. I said, uh, I played dumb. I said, what? <laughs> By what? And she said, she said, whatever's happening in Branson, nothing had happened yet. There was no church. There was no property. There was no anything. I'm so excited. God answers you yes. through, in the joy of your heart. Hallelujah. Same kind of things going on over in Florida now. Yes. I believe we are on the verge of some major reaping. Yes. Major, this church, this ministry, we've sown, 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 and I believe I can hear the master saying, throw the net out yeah. right over there in Sarasota. Yeah. We're going to reap people. Yeah. We're going to reap changed lives. Yeah. We're going to reap money and yeah. stuff and volunteers yeah. and ability to send the word around the world. Yeah. Do you believe it? Yes. We've sown big, we're going to reap big. Yes. Do you have any stirring at all about it? Yes. That joy helps you to identify it, helps you to detect it, helps you to see I'm on the right track. Keep going. Go all the way with it. This is where we're going to reap. In Luke 1, you'll see this, an example of this. Mary, Elizabeth and Mary actually, have gotten angelic visitations and words from the Lord. Well, I, I should say Elizabeth's husband and Mary. And now when they've met after these supernatural visitations, in the uh, 39th verse, Luke 1, 39, Mary arose in those days, went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Before anything was described or said, when she got in proximity of the greatest seed that has ever been sown that produced the greatest harvest that ever will be experienced. It's still, the harvest is still going on off of that seed. Man, the joy that came up in her spirit. I mean, the baby that wasn't born jumped. He, he didn't just kick, he leapt. She felt that. And she was filled with the Holy Ghost. And you can see if you read the rest of it, there is joy there. Amen. There is joy, 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 joy. Yes, Stand on your feet, everybody. 